And the Bolts win big against the Washington Capitals. The big plays that made the difference on the ice as the Lightning headed to an important game for tomorrow. All right, plus, let's look live outside at beautiful downtown Tampa this morning where it looks like another cloudy day as we wake up on this Wednesday morning. Is more rain in the forecast? Will Storm Team Navy Meteorologist Lee Spin will show us when and which parts of our area are expected to get wet today. Well, good morning and welcome to News Channel 8 today. I'm Gail Guayardo. And I'm Marco Villarreal. And going back to the bolts here, you noticed they won last night. You also noticed that Lee had her blue dress on yesterday. I, Just saying. I, I, I did too. I uh, you did too, yes. Yeah, well, we ha everybody has to be participating for it to work. And that's what happened yesterday. So Max Defender 8, speaking of lightning and lightning bolts, we have just a couple of them actually off the off the Pasco coastline. Currently 14 lightning strikes, but notice this is well offshore and actually not getting any closer to shore. You can just see those lightning strikes for miles away. On shore, just some light rain now. I was tracking the heavier batch of rain that pushed through Rocky Creek, but now it's actually fizzling out. So it's just very light rain now through southern portion of Hillsborough County down into Manatee County. Once we go even a little bit farther to the south with Max Defender 8, some heavier downpours around Englewood. So all wrapping around this area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico. It's been the culprit for our higher rain chances all this week, and it will continue to wrap in showers today. I'll give it to our... Well, we'll try to go to our Max Defender 8 future radar, but, you know, sometimes things just don't like to work. So we're just going to go to your forecast for you. 86 degrees, downpours develop today. Our rain chance about 50%. Muggy and extra clouds. So at 538, we're going to take you on an eight-day temperature trend, guys. All right, thank you, Lee. Right now, a bad stomach bug is plaguing an elementary school in Pasco County. More than 100 students were absent yesterday, and almost all of the staff is so sick. They can't come in. News Channel 8's Jana Jones joins us live from Hudson Elementary School. Jana, this sounds serious. Good morning to you, Gail and Marco. This is certainly something you do not want to get. You may notice I'm standing outside of the fence trying to stay very far away, but the deal with this is this spreads very quickly, and a lot of people are getting it without much effort at all, and that is why so many people are out. Now, the school district sent a message home to parents last Wednesday warning them of a gastrointestinal illness. It says individuals can come, become infected in several ways. That includes eating foods, drinking liquids, or touching surfaces that are contaminated, and then touching your mouth. The scary part of this is how easily it spreads. Symptoms of this are very nasty. Those suffering have diarrhea, vomiting, fever, fatigue, and a headache, and also bad stomach pain. Most people get this virus anywhere from one to three days, but it can be longer if you get dehydrated. Now, what doctors are recommending for this is good hand washing. That means 20 minutes under the water with soap and water. And a thing about this is hand sanitizer does not work. Students and parents and uh, excuse me, students and teachers are asked to stay home anywhere from 24 to 48 hours just to make sure that no one else gets sick. But this is a very, very serious sickness here at this school. Yeah, it sounds brutal. All right, thank you, Jana. And now some controversy in addressing the crisis in our classrooms. A battle is growing over who's going to pay for security on Pinellas County campuses. And today a job fair is scheduled looking to hire school security officers without knowing where the pay is going to come from. Amanda Shivari joins us now live in Clearwater off Old Coachman Road where the job fair is going to happen later this morning. Amanda, the governor is requiring districts to put an SRO at every school, but now a lot of local leaders are saying we're not paying for that. Marco, that is exactly right. In the last few months, we've seen Pinellas County commissioners and Largo City leaders saying they're not going to pay for this multi-million dollar proposal. St. Petersburg mayor is just the most recent city official to step forward to say this bill is not my responsibility. Let's walk you through what's happening in St. Petersburg. The requirement there is 28 SROs, 25 in elementary schools and three in high schools. The cost alone for those three officers, $126,000. Mayor Rick Christman says they can't afford Afford to pay for all 28. So the plan now, they're going to pay for the three at high schools only. The other 25 will be up to the district. Now, I truly feel bad for the school district. They've been put in a really bad place. Rick Scott signed a bad bill that didn't include the necessary funding. 
The governor's office sent us a statement about this decision overnight saying, quote, there is absolutely no reason as to why the Pinellas County School District should not put officers in every school. And going on to say about Mayor Rick Christman's decision, the governor sent us this part of the statement saying the mayor should focus on working with Pinellas School District and local leaders on ways to prioritize school safety instead of criticizing an important law and hundreds of millions of dollars in state funding. And with this issue still undecided, Pinellas County School District leaders are moving forward with that job fair today. It's going to run from 10 a.m. until 2. They're looking for a number of positions, including bus drivers, but security officers as well, as we still wait to hear how those officers will be paid. Marco? Yeah, that's something you don't usually hear about, a job fair where you don't know how you're going to be able to pay these people. All right, Amanda, thank you. New this morning, encouraging news about the morning commute on a busy part of I-75. All of the southbound lanes of I-75 between Fowler and Fletcher are open. Crews closed two lanes for bridge repairs while you were sleeping. They finished those repairs and opened all lanes. Here's some video that caught our attention from Lakeland this morning. Randy Hubbard posted this on Facebook. The moment a down power line caught fire. We're making calls this morning to find out more about how this happened. Much needed victory on the road to the cup for the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Bolts beating the Capitals 4 to 2 in DC and our own Dan Lucas is with the team taking a look at the big plays and what the Bolts need to do to get another win tomorrow. Good morning from Capital One Arena in Washington DC. The Lightning finally strike in the Eastern Conference final a big 4 to 2 win on the road over the Capitals after being dominated uh, in games 1 and 2 in Tampa. So the Lightning are on the board down 2 games to 1 and they face another critical game tomorrow in game four and to get ready for that they, they're going to have to keep the pressure on the capitals which is what they did with the four checks and a very physical play goaltender andre vasilevsky was the difference in game three he had 36 saves and many of them were crucial at a time when the bolts were trying to build a lead he had goals from steven stamkos nikita kucherov victor hedman a defenseman scored uh brayden point had a big goal for the bolts too setting the uh, cushion there that they needed to get the win. So still a lot to go. They don't want to come home down three to one. So it's very critical. The Bolts have a good practice today and then get after it again tomorrow in game four. In Washington, D.C., Dan Lucas, News Channel 8 Sports. Well, tomorrow's game is in Washington, D.C., but you can watch the game with other Bolts fans at Curtis Hickson Park. The party starts 6 p.m., puck drops at 8, and the fun continues all night. Happening today, the National Hurricane Conference gets underway in West Palm Beach. Hurricane specialists and other experts will discuss hurricane preparedness, responding to storms, and how communities recover. Hurricane season officially begins June 1st and runs through November 30th. The start is just more than two weeks away. Hard to believe. All right, it's a breezy morning in some places. This is video of the American flag blowing over home bank on Gale Mabry Highway. That kind of puts things in perspective as you head out the door this morning. Yeah, gusty, but very patriotic. I love it. 538 now. And let's find out where all these winds are coming from. Good morning, Lee. Yeah, we still have that area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico. Not looking like it's going to develop into anything tropical, but it is sending rounds of rain into our area. So Max Defender 8 has been tracking that all morning long. At the moment, the heaviest rain is off the Pasco and Hernando coastline. Notice there's 15 lightning strikes offshore, but none onshore. What's happening onshore through Hillsborough County is just some light rain. I mean, you, where you use your windshield wipers maybe once or twice, turn them off, turn them back on. That's happening in South Tampa, then along the South Shore near Ruskin, even into the northern portion of Manatee County. Plus, we have some heavier downpours around Englewood in southern Sarasota. So that little batch of rain from Minnesota to, to Minnesota Key will be moving off to the north and east. So it'll be near Northport at about 552 here and Murdoch at 605. So now let's go forward with a 50% rain chance today, 40% tomorrow, 50% again for Friday and Saturday. What about the rainfall potential? Not everyone will see rain, but between now and 9 a.m., 9 p.m., excuse me, anywhere you see the green, that's about a half an inch of rainfall. Some places make it up to about an inch. Our, rain, our high temperature today, 86, also 86 tomorrow, and we trend a little drier and a little hotter next week. We check in now with traffic on the 8th, Meredith. We're going to get you started with a live view of 275 near MLK. We are seeing some wet pavement, but we are delay free through that area. Showing you I-4 here, that's near the amphitheater. Also looking good, maybe a little damp in that area, but I-4 here is delay free. So let's talk about I-4 in Hillsborough County. Moving 
moving you into Polk County. Right now, you're cruising here near Magadosh Road, 72 miles per hour, 68 miles per hour as you make your way past State Road 33. I-75 through the Re Riverview area also up to speed. Your Bay Area bridges so far so good. 10 minutes from Toll Plaza to Toll Plaza across the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Another update on the 8th. Now back to the desk. It's an amazing May here on News Channel 8. We are giving away a 65-inch television set. You have to stay tuned, though, to hear the word of the day. We're going to reveal it uh, sometime between now and 7 a.m. Once you hear the word, go to WFLA.com to enter for a chance to win. I think it was kind of funny. Meredith said we should make it Yanny or Laurel, Ooh. and people might hear it differently because that is the big talker online this morning. Yeah. We're talking about it on Facebook right now. And we're playing the audio and then trying to decide what everybody's hearing. We both hear different things. We do. I hear Laurel, she hears Yanny. All right, well, safety seats, not just for babies and toddlers. Up next, the reason Consumer Reports wants parents to use booster seats for their bigger kids. And going beyond the list, I'm taking a look at why there's more to Tampa Bay than just our beautiful beaches and waterways for families. And if you aren't following us on Instagram, now's the time to do it. It features the best videos and photos from across Tampa Bay and hot spots of great places to eat and find cocktails. So join us now at WFLA. It's 541, 73 degrees in downtown Tampa, and you're watching News Channel 8 today. News Channel 8 traffic is brought to you by Wild Jaguar Sarasota. My name is Marilyn Torres and I have been a stylist for 17 years. I love doing men's haircuts. <laughs> I enjoy that. I really do enjoy that. Oh, because I live so happy. Ven a verme hoy al Salon Fantastic Sam's. Meet Fiona. She just got the Frontier Bundle. I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD. And we love Spectrum's 24-hour local news channel. Frontier doesn't have that. Get Spectrum TV $29.99 a month. Call 855-439-2999. And with Spectrum Internet, we get 100 megabits with no data caps. It's the fastest speed for the price with a free modem and security suite. My starting speed is only 50 megabits, and I pay nearly $5 more a month for internet security software. Get Spectrum Internet $29.99 a month. Call 855-439-2999. Plus, Spectrum Voice has unlimited nationwide calling with no additional taxes and fees. That cost extra, too. I'd switch, but I'm in a contract to get their best price. Spectrum has no contracts, and they'll help buy out yours. I'm calling Spectrum. Spectrum TV, Internet, and Voice, $29.99 a month each. Call 855-439-2999. Does it make sense that a German car company would break ground in Spartanburg, South Carolina? Or that they build over 400,000 sports activity vehicles a year? And customize them millions of different ways. Does it make sense that BMW's largest factory in the world is in this small town in the south? It makes perfect sense. The BMW X4, X5, X6, and X3, engineered in Germany, built in America. Right now, lease a BMW X1 for as low as $339 a month. I love color. I really love color. Really love color. As far as I'm concerned, everything looks better with color. My color feels like a splurge, but it's not. <laughs> Storm Team 8 weather is sponsored by All Florida Ram Jack, your local foundation repair experts. Well, this morning... In an eight on your side consumer report, a look at the importance of car seats for more than just babies and toddlers. Big kids also need a boost to keep them safe in the car, and Avery Cotton is here to show us why. Avery, you usually think it's for the small little toddlers. Yeah, and both of you would know of all things that you want to buy your children, buying a car seat is one of the most important. What's scary, though, is that nearly 46% of child seats and boosters are installed incorrectly. Consumer Reports recently held a photo shoot to demonstrate that even after children outgrow the weight or height limit of their forward-facing car seat, most kids still won't be ready to use just a seat belt. The solution, a booster seat. Boosters are the best way to protect these big kids in a car crash. It helps position the belt over the strong bony parts of their body, 
rather than their internal organs. Boosters raise children up so that the seat belt fits correctly over the sternum and the center of the collarbone, not the neck or arm, and low across the upper thighs rather than the abdomen. Boosters come in two main styles, high back and backless. While using a backless one is better than not using one at all, Consumer Reports recommends a high back booster because these do a better job of positioning the shoulder belt and the side wings provide some side impact protection in a crash. The Evenflow Big Kid Amp High Back and Evenflow Big Kid Sport are Consumer Reports' top rated booster seats. Kids generally need to be in a booster until they're at least 4 foot 9 and between the ages of 8 and 12 years old. Typically, this is when the vehicle seatbelt will fit them correctly and they're more comfortable on the larger vehicle seats. It's also when their bones will be stronger to better handle the pressure from a seatbelt during sudden braking or in a crash. And even when kids outgrow the need for a booster, Consumer Report says the safest place for all kids under 13 is in the back seat. And Consumer Report says that many states have booster laws requiring children under 8 years old to use a booster. But here in Florida, children have to be in a child or booster seat until they turn 6 years old. And you were saying that they are pretty hard to install. You literally have to climb in, get into the seat mm -hmm. yourself, knee it in there, all while pulling the strap through. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like it's like a circus act. Yeah. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. And our 9-year-old still has the booster seat just because yeah. she's so small. Sure. So, good stuff. Well, 8 is on your side this week going beyond the list.